Welcome to Chemicals Definitions webinar. This is the first in the chemicals series. I'll be your host this morning. I'm Zara McMahon, uh, Office Coordinator of Safety Action. Safety Action are your specialist in workplace safety and business risk. Let me just explain the administration for the webinar. If you have any specific questions during the webinar, you can ask these by typing in the questions panel. We'll do our best to answer these. We will also send a recording of the webinar to members tomorrow and members can watch the recordings via our website. I'd like to introduce our presenter, Andrea Tassiolis, General Manager of Safety Action. Andrea has a Bachelor of Science, Graduate Diploma in Occupational Hazard Management and 12 years professional safety experience and is a certified OHS professional. Andrea, welcome to the webinar. Thanks for the introduction, Zara, and welcome viewers. Today, I'd like to talk to you about chemical safety. And we, our first webinar is um, about the basics, basically the definitions used when talking about chemicals. Uh, I find that this is um, sometimes the area that confuses people the most uh, when learning about chemicals because there's so many acronyms used. So I'm just going to take you through the, the main acronyms and definitions used when talking about workplace chemicals. So, pardon me, here's uh, an overview of the key definitions that I'll be taking you through today. Uh, there's several different definitions associated with the safety laws. Um, this is because in different states and countries, the laws have different names. I'll explain what these definitions are. Next, chemicals have different classifications um, based uh, on the law. Dangerous goods, hazardous substances and hazardous chemicals. I'll explain what those terms mean and what the differences are. GHS, you've probably heard of this term. I'll explain what it means. There's some special terms associated with dangerous goods classifications. I'll explain those and the hazardous chemical definitions and I'll tell you all about what an SDS is. Firstly, let me take you through some of the legislation definitions. Uh, I'm showing on the screen here a pyramid, which is the hierarchy of the safety legislation. Now, all of the states that I'll mention have the same general hierarchy of legislation. So up the top, uh, they each um, state or country, if the legislation is uh, based in the for the whole country, uh, they have a safety act, which sits at the top. Uh, beneath that, they will be a corresponding regulations and supporting those act and regulations, there'll be codes and standards. Um, for example, codes of practice or compliance codes that tell you how to meet your obligations under the Safety Act or regulations. There's also many, uh, in fact, hundreds of Australian standards for chemicals and that you may also have company policies and procedures. And this diagram just sits, shows you how they all fit together. So let me tell you specifically what the names of the safety legislations are called in some of the states. Uh, we'll start in Victoria because uh, that's, that's where I live and work. So in Victoria, you might have heard the term OHS. That stands for the Occupational Health and Safety. Act and we also have Occupational Health and Safety Regulations in Victoria. And for chemicals, the OHS regulations include the details about hazardous substances. Sometimes you might hear them referred to as has subs. In Victoria, we also have a Dangerous Goods Act. Shorter, the short term for that is DG. And we also have DG storage and handling regulations, which apply in the workplace. There are also transport, dangerous goods uh, transport regulations as well. 
In the harmonised states, um, so what I mean by this is the states that have adopted the national model work health and safety legislation. Uh, so those states in Australia are all the states except for Victoria and Western Australia. They all have legislation called the Work Health and Safety Act, WHS, and they also have WHS regulations. The, let me take you over to Western Australia, WA for short. WA use a similar but slightly different term, Occupational Safety and Health, so OSH Act, and they have OSH regulations. In Western Australia, they also have separate dangerous goods legislation, so being the DG Safety Act, and the DG Storage and Handling of Non-Explosives Regulations being the main one. Uh, but if your work handles explosives, you'll also need to refer to the explosives regulations in Western Australia. Uh, if you work in South Australia, it's important to note that in addition to the work health and safety laws, there's also dangerous substances uh, act and regulations. You, you might also see those abbreviated to DS. For those of you in New Zealand, you use again a different term, HSW Act and also various HSW regulations. That stands for Health and Safety at Work. Uh, if you, um, you might also hear the term OSHA, which is the Occupational Safety and Health Authority in America. So keep out, um, an ear out for that one. So now that I've told you what the main laws are called, it then becomes important to understand what are the chemicals which are covered by those different laws. So firstly, let me explain the difference between DGs, dangerous goods, and hazardous substances. Uh, it's important to note in Victoria, we use the term hazardous substance. The other states in Australia, many of them have gone away from using the term hazardous substance. I'll tell you what they call it in a moment. So a hazardous substance, by itself is a substance that has the potential to harm human health. So a hazardous substance is something might, um, that could cause harm in the long term, such as a, a chemical that could cause cancer, or it could be harmful in the short term, such as um, being immediately toxic or immediately um, causing damage to your skin or um, other types of damage. And there are various ways that a hazardous substance could cause harm. And these are called routes of exposure. So the common routes of exposure for a hazardous substance, um, the most common in a workplace being inhalation, so that you could breathe in the substance. Uh, or skin absorption. So commonly in the workplace, if you don't wear gloves and spill the chemical on the skin, it can cause harm by immediately damaging the skin if it's corrosive um, or getting into your bloodstream and causing harm that way. Um, the, the route that the chemical causes harm really depends on the type of chemical that it is. Um, but it, of course, depending on the chemical, um, eye contact or ingestion might also be a route of exposure to be concerned about with a hazardous substance. Next, let me tell you about dangerous goods. Dangerous goods are different to hazardous substances in that they have an immediate physical or secondary health effect which means that if you don't store a dangerous good correctly, um, it can react very dangerously. Um, or, it can also, or it could also be classified on the basis of a, a health impact. Uh, so for example, some dangerous goods you may know of um, would include uh, flammable liquids. So they're called class three dangerous goods. Um, so for example, petrol. 
Uh, all of the gases in cylinders will be dangerous goods, class two dangerous goods. Uh, so things like uh, LPG or oxygen stored in a cylinder are a dangerous good. Uh, so substances that are bad for health, so toxic substances, if they could immediately be dangerous if not stored correctly, um, they're also a dangerous good. So a class six dangerous good. Other common ones are corrosive, class eight dangerous goods, are ones that could corrode metal if um, they come in contact with that, or they can also corrode your skin. Dangerous goods are commonly recognised by these dangerous goods diamonds that you see on the screen. If, like I mentioned, dangerous goods, the most important thing for managing dangerous goods is the correct storage. So I'm showing you some photos on the screen of an explosion that occurred, occurred in Tianjin in China in 2015. Uh, in the ports area, various dangerous goods were stored together uh, and they weren't segregated according to the class and the dangerous goods um, did react dangerously together and resulted in many explosions and fires. Let me zoom out for you. And you can see in this photo, um, that area here was where the first photo was. And um, those are all shipping containers and all these vehicles, you can see, um, you know, these explosions have caused severe damage for a very large area. Um, most of your workplaces don't have the danger of such a severe dangerous reaction with dangerous goods, um, but really bad things can happen on a much smaller scale if dangerous goods are not stored correctly. Let's move on and I'll talk to you about GHS. So it's GHS is a term which means the globally harmonized system. And this is the system uh, developed by the United Nations. And the intention is, is that all across the world, we use one system for the classification and labeling of all chemicals. In Australia, most of the states have now adopted GHS for the classification and labelling of our chemicals. In the, we call them the WHS states, so the states that have adopted the model, the harmonised legislation, uh, have incorporated GHS into those laws, those states there. And Victoria last year did incorporate GHS into our laws, into the OHS regulations for hazardous substances, but we did not adopt GHS for dangerous goods. Let me tell you a bit about how GHS is different. Uh, firstly, the classification criteria between GHS um, GHS and the previous criteria for classifying hazardous substances is that they are classified um, according to a different criteria. And, but overall, the hazardous substances and dangerous goods or substances that were previously called hazardous substances or dangerous goods, uh, they're, not, they're no longer two separate categories in those states. They now share a common definition called hazardous chemicals. Although, although largely hazardous substances and dangerous goods have all become hazardous chemicals, because the classification criteria is different, uh, some substances um, that were hazardous substances may not be hazardous chemicals, and some dangerous goods, um, for example, um, many miscellaneous dangerous goods uh, and not do not meet the hazardous chemicals classification criteria and therefore are not hazardous chemicals, um, but they are still dangerous goods. Uh, and also with that um, new classification, there may be some substances that were not that were not hazardous substances or dangerous goods, but may be hazardous chemicals. So it is a broad definition to group those together. Also consider if you're in Victoria that we still do use the term hazardous substance and we have separate laws for dangerous goods. That's also the case in Western Australia. 
The GHS system has a new labelling system. I'll show you those in a moment. GHS also introduced some new terms. So material safety data sheet, which we previously knew, is replaced with SDS, uh, which stands for safety data sheet. A key feature of GHS is this new labelling feature called uh, hazard, hazard pictograms. And they are the same shape and look a bit similar to the dangerous goods diamonds, um, but the colour is different. Uh, but what's um, especially uh, valuable with these new GHS pictograms is that we also have pictures that represent health hazards or previously known hazardous substances, which we did not have in the uh, under the dangerous goods legislation. They don't have a special picture for health other than the toxic diamond. So what you'll see on the screen here is that these, these are the new diagrams. So this one, um, which you can see is a human torso and something going on in the chest area. Um, what that's representing is an explosion in the torso. Uh, and so this represents a severe health hazard. I, I find that easy to remember that, you know, if a exploding torso means something really bad could happen. The exclamation mark next to uh, this hazardous pictogram means it represents a minor health hazard. Uh, so for example, skin irritation. Uh, so when you see either of those diamonds on a chemical package, you'll know that that represents a health hazard. Another new picture, which is for a dangerous goods, is the one that looks a little bit like a cricket bat up the top here. Um, this means it's a gas cylinder. And so moving forward, you'll see those uh, that diamond on gas cylinders. Um, that'll be helpful if you did not know that you were already looking at a gas cylinder. Now on the screen here, I'm just showing you a comparison between the hazardous chemical GHS pictograms and the dangerous goods diamonds. So what you can see here is that, for example, a common dangerous good, the flammable, li flammable liquids, flammable solids, there's various types of flammables. But when it comes to GHS pictogram, they all share this one uh, flammables diamond. So you'll see there that many dangerous goods become one type of diamond, but those uh, health hazards, the hazardous substances that did not have a diamond, um, they now have their own uh, hazardous chemicals diamond. Something else that's new under the GHS is the, the requirement for this standard format of label. So you may have already seen this new label on some of your uh, products that you buy in the supermarket. And as usual, you, you'll see the chemical name. Um, the new, part, new feature is, is that they will have those uh, hazardous chemical pictograms on the label. You may also say they may instead use the dangerous goods diamond on the label there. Uh, there will be, there's a lot more uh, chemical information now featured on the label. And you may see these word danger or it may have the word warning. These are called signal words. Danger is telling you that there's a severe hazard. Warning means that there's a less severe hazard. So if it's talking about health hazard, it might, may feature the corresponding hazardous, picture, um, hazardous chemical pictogram. Let me take you back to the definition safety data sheet that, we met, that I mentioned earlier. Uh, SDS stands for safety data sheet and the safety data sheet outlines the key properties of the chemical and tells you what you should do if somebody was accidentally exposed to that chemical or if there's an emergency such as a fire. 
Kim, where you previously had an MSDS, under the, the new laws, um, the MSDSs are now superseded by the new safety data sheets. Uh, so if you have uh, material safety data sheets at your workplace, uh, you should go back to the supplier and get the safety data sheet, which will tell you how your chemical has been classified under GHS. The definition I'm telling you about now is called ADG code. The ADG code tells you about the requirements for transporting dangerous goods by road or rail. So the short name in is ADG code or ADGC you may hear. More about dangerous goods. Some of the terms that you might hear about for dangerous goods is called bulk. A bulk dangerous good is one that is stored in a large container. So for example, you're seeing an LPG tank on the screen. Uh, a bulk container is one that has a capacity greater than 500 litres or kilograms. Or if it's a solid stuff substance, a quantity greater than or equal to 500 kilograms. IBC, you'll see one on the screen. IBC stands for Intermediate Bulk Container. Now let me tell you about packaged dangerous goods. Packaged dangerous goods are those in a container with a capacity of less than 500 litres or kilograms. Common forms of packaged dangerous goods in the workplace are like you see on the screen, gas cylinders, chemicals in drums, or even the smaller um, containers of cleaning chemicals. If they're classed as dangerous goods, they'll be called packaged dangerous goods. Now, let me tell you about HasChem placarding. I'll show you on the screen some examples of HasChem placarding. So the red sign that you can see on your screen is called the HasChem sign. This is the sign that is displayed at a workplace when they have above uh, placarding limits of dangerous goods on the premises. You'll often see that sign at the front gate of a property that stores dangerous goods. And that's telling you that that property stores dangerous goods above the placarding quantity. The smaller sign on the left called a packaged store placard is one placed above the entrances to a building which stores above placarding quantity of packaged dangerous goods. Uh, so those are the ones we looked at previously which are the smaller containers such as drums, cylinders or small chemical containers. If that area contains more than a specified limit of any particular class of chemical, the diamond for that chemical class will be displayed on the package store placard. The other sign that you see is a bulk placard and that one will be displayed on a um, bulk vessel. For example, uh, this one is an ammonia bulk placard, so this would be stored on a bulk, um, displayed on a bulk ammonia tank. Those are the key definitions I wanted to share with you today. Uh, are there any questions? Um, yeah, Andrea, there's a question that's come through. Um, you said that the HASCHEM is for dangerous goods. Does it stand for hazardous chemicals? Oh, that's a good question. Um, some people do say has chem when they're talking about hazardous uh, chemicals. Um, but has chem for hazardous chemical placarding is only referring to dangerous goods. So has chem placarding is commonly used for those uh, signs that I just talked about. Um, so those signage is purely for dangerous goods. Um, but it's also commonly used for the term for dangerous goods transport signage. Okay, great. All right, thank you viewers for attending our webinar. Uh, if we didn't answer your question today, please get in touch. Um, the contact details are, are they on the screen? 
They'll be oh, in an email. Sorry, they'll they're be... not on the screen. <laughs> That's all right. We'll send them in the follow-up email. Um, our upcoming webinars are displayed on the screen. You can sign up for our webinars at our website, safetyaction.com.au, or call or email the office. Remember, Safety Action members can attend free webinars and watch recorded webinars. You can ask us how you can become a member. Thanks for attending. Have a great day and we'll see you next time. Thanks, Sarah. Bye.